Hello there, welcome to Travels with Jordy. My name is Peter and I live here in Victoria, British Columbia on a classic wooden motor cruiser with my pup Jordy, all the while restoring it for some pretty ambitious cruising plans, which we'll let you know in the near future. Anyway, if that's the kind of thing that might be interesting to you, uh, why don't you consider sticking around and subscribing? We'd love to have you aboard. Cheers. So this week should be really fun. I'm going to try some steam bending. You recognize we're back out in the cockpit of MV Geordi. Uh, you'll also notice that the thwarts that are in and out and in and out are not currently out here because we've had some rain and they don't have varnish on them yet. So I don't want them to expose to my not so watertight shelter. Anyway, what I have to do is put this trim piece on, which is about a three and a half inch by three inch thick strip of uh, sapelli mahogany which will go from right here somewhere all the way along around this corner to here now the first section here about four feet or so doesn't need to be steam bent only a 24 inch section around this curve needs to be bent this again could be straight so i'm going to try the steam in a bag technique that um, was popularized by tips from a shipwright um, and, but I have some small modifications uh, that might be enhancements. We'll see how it works out. I've got a steam bend. I need a source of steam. So I've been to the thrift store and I have bought a $7 electric kettle. Um, whether that will provide enough heat and steam is yet to be determined. I'm going to modify it slightly. It's actually an ideal kettle for this. Um, we're looking for a kettle to do this. You need one that doesn't turn off thermostatically. In other words, it keeps boiling regardless of um, the temperature that it gets inside and something that I could drill a hole in, which I'm gonna put this piece of pipe in right there, which will become the steam tube up into what I'm steaming. The other neat thing about this one is it's a whistle kettle, meaning there's a baffle in here between the spout and the main body of water. So the baffle goes down under the water level, meaning that steam pressure builds up above the baffle. You can add water while it's boiling, very convenient. I do have to plug the whistle so that all the steam will come up through this pipe. Anyway, we'll get into that some more. Now, what may also be interesting, um, this steam bending in uh, polyethylene plastic, which has become fairly popular with small sections. Um, I first saw it on tips from a shipwright, and I've thought about it a bit, thinking with a limited supply of steam and a small area, instead of using plastic, I'm going to use this bubble wrappy mylar um, insulation which hopefully I can staple over it. It also will be a little more rigid, so it'll create a void. In other words, there'll be air space around it, steam space around it. It won't slap against it, which sometimes happen with the plastic. It'll provide some insulation to increase the temperature inside. I'm just hoping the material can take the heat. I'm pretty sure it can. But anyway, you wanna see, let's first put the little steam tube on the kettle. This should be pretty straightforward. Uh, start with the suitable size hole saw. Um, position it roughly where you think it would be suitable. I could go right to the top, but this way I can retain the handle and I can zip tie the tube to the handle. I think that'll work out relatively well for me. So I'm gonna shoot in right here, basically at the highest point that's practical. I'm not wanting to interfere with the baffle, which is about here. I'm just guessing all this, right? Let's just, uh, let's see how that goes, right there. There we go. Pretty straightforward. So I don't know what uh, length, I have to think about how I'm gonna set this all up. So anyway, I'm gonna shoot for above there for now. And we'll see how that works out. And if my calculations are correct, this should just slip right into there. There we go, perfect. And I'll just zip tie that around the handle and I have a uh, steamer, uh, perhaps. I still gotta plug up a couple of holes here. All right, there we go. So, Let's, let's experiment. Let's make some steam. All right. Hmm. It appears I'm watching a pot boil. Okay. So the water just started boiling. I expect it's going to take a while to warm up the tube. What's probably happening is the steam is coming up here, condensing on the inside of this tube and dribbling back down, which is fine. Uh, but it'll bring it up to temperature eventually and uh, we'll get a reasonable amount of steam. Oh, it's plenty hot. Woohoo. Crikey. It may also pay to insulate the tube or I suppose set it up in a situation where the tube is as short as possible But I just wanted to see what it would do with a with a tube this tall Yeah, I think it's time for the next part of this test I'm gonna do a test by trying to steam this uh, piece of scrap although it's not scrap. This is precious stuff But this small piece of sapelli 
Uh, it's the same thickness, 3 8 It's pretty close to the same width. It'll be a little bit wider what I'm doing. And it's shorter than two feet, but I'll be able to put it in my little steam bag, envelope, insulated, whatever you want to call it. And we'll see what happens over the course of half an hour, an hour, or two hours. I don't know how long it'll take. A um, little background on steam bending sapelli. It depends who you believe or who, whatever, what you read. I've been all over the internet. Uh, about half uh, the people who talk about it says it's unsteam bendable, and the others seem to think it goes just fine. Um, there's you know some de some debate about whether or not when the cells dry out in the kiln they can never absorb moisture again um i'm not sure steam bending is all about moisture in the wood i think it's about heating the lignin so it gets soft and pliable but again i have never steam bent before this is my first go at it you know what i'm not going to suppose anything i'm just going to try it and see what happens yeah okay Let's uh, let's take some of this stuff, which is wonderfully cheap. It's two feet long, so that's just about perfect for what I need to do. I'm gonna make a little fold-over bag, basically, like a, you know, about that big. Somehow I have a feeling this is mylar, but I don't really know my plastics all that well. Uh, and even if I knew it was mylar, would I know that that would be resilient? To heat, I don't know. So I'm imagining I'm going to um, affix it with staples, right? I mean, let's see. Seems seems good so far. I do need to leave a little gap in the bottom for the steam tube to go in. I would probably like it to be reasonably tight there. So let's uh, put a few more in here. Maybe double these ones because it's going to be under some tension at this point. And um, I want steam to be able to escape. It's got to come out somewhere. So I'll leave a little pocket at the top for it to come up past the wood and past in either direction. Yeah, yeah. So this is a couple of tests. One, can this take the heat? And two, can this be steam bent? Let's go try something. Okay, that'll hold that in. Get our little steamer going here. Open up the inlet. Slide it over the Okay. Well, let's see. Um, I'm pretty excited. Let's turn it on. And wait. While we're steaming. Um, it's certainly steaming great. No steam is leaking out anything but this highest slit at this far end. Wow, that's hot. Um, haven't had it melt yet. It's been steaming about five minutes. Seems to be holding together. Now the trick is not make sure the kettle doesn't run dry. Yeah. The kettle made kind of a pop sound and stopped. And I've been uh, religiously checking the water level of it and keeping it full so it definitely didn't run out of water. It may actually have a thermal cutout that I wasn't aware of. Um, I'll let it cool down now and see if it wants to start again. Um, this is a good opportunity to see if at 17 minutes if there is any effect whatsoever in the wood. Let's have a look. See. There's our piece of wood. Mm. Oh man! Hey hey! That's actually way more flexible than it was. Let's just see if this could be pulled into here at all. I hate to do a sacrificial test here, but uh, I am curious. Now it's gonna wanna walk, but let's see what we can do. And one in this direction. Again, it's gonna wanna walk. Well, I think I can almost announce that something's going to fly off of here in a second, but even 17 minutes steaming made it possible to make this end. Oh, there we did crack. But boy, I was darn close before it did. Darn close. Okay, so all I have to do is uh, find a way to keep steaming. Maybe that means rewiring the kettle if it's got a thermal cutout. That very, very promising. Uh, we won't need to do a test again. If I can get us boiling, we can actually cut the real piece and we can actually do this real steaming. Wow! 
Let's see what we can find in here in the way of a thermal cutout. Uh, these look like little plastic rivets. I won't need them anymore. Let's see if they just come off. Yeah. Okay, so... Having never taken one of these apart, I have no idea what I'll find. <laughs> the element fell off the other side. So, we got some stuff here. Okay, now that could be a little bimetal thermal cutout, or it could be just to make contact. Two terminals, three screws, and a little, see that's white thermal paste there? That's to conduct heat. And that conducted against this little jobby here. If this gets hot, it pops something in there and the juice goes off. But anyway, so if I think if I remove this, I will uh, be successful in uh, letting this thing cook itself to death. Of course, I'm paying close attention and making sure that that doesn't happen. The trick is, can I get this all back together? Yeah. <laughs> Pry that down. Uh, those two contacts go over that. I just get one, I'll be home free. A uh, nice magnetic screwdriver, very handy. Not. Okay, well, we'll see if my little hack has forced this into a uh, full-time boil mode. All right, so we're making steam again. I don't know if you can hear it. So at least I haven't killed it with my little hack. Uh, now we'll see if it continues to make steam nonstop. It's hotter than heck in here today in this tent because the sun is out full blast. Even though it's only early March, it is hot. Okay, this is going great. All right, so here's one of my in one window across the table and out the other window rips. Let's get all the gear going here. Actually, that gear could use a little cleanup. All right. There we go, now I can see. You notice I only cleaned one lens. <laughs> okay, let's go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to ease the two, the top and bottom edge that's exposed with this little 5 16th round over bit. And the back side I'm gonna ease as much as I dare uh, just with some sandpaper because of course it has to sit up against the existing cockpit so it can't be eased too much. So the two trim pieces are basically prepped. You can see I've eased the edges, sanded them up a little bit and marked them out uh, for drilling for the screw holes, for the bungs. And these marks here through to here, that's the section that has to be steam bent. The rest of it doesn't get bent at all. Um, the remainder off the end here is going to get cut off. I'm not exactly sure where because it's pretty hard to measure around that corner. It's hailing like crazy right now. Uh, I was outside trying to get you some pictures of it and I got beamed hard enough that I had to be driven in. Let's see. Well, they're not big, but they do kind of hurt when they hit you in the face. Anyway, hail. Wild. Okay, so um, I'm going to pre-drill the holes. But I'm not going to drill them through the section that's going to be steam bent. Uh, again, trying to minimize the chance of beginning a fracture. Um, after all, I really, really want to make sure I look after this section of the wood pretty well. I think I mentioned that I didn't cut the end accurately because I don't know where it ends. So the last set of screws are roughly here, but I'm not going to drill for that one. Anyway, wait, you don't need to know all this. I'm going to drill some holes and then I'm going to start steaming. Yeah. Okay, so I've clamped um, the uh, port side uh, piece to be steamed. It's upside down, it'll swing around the other way, but I wanted to have this section. So it basically gets steamed between there and there, which will flip around and end up in that corner. So um, I slip on my steam bag, my little steam bag. Now it's a bit windy and cool, and we just had a hailstorm. So I don't know how much effect this is gonna have on the steaming, but Plug it in. Okay, so I have about an hour to create what I'm gonna call a mold. I'm gonna take a piece of plywood or wood of some sort that will press the trim in against the corner of the transom there evenly and I can clamp to it rather than putting point loads on with the two clamps, which of course is what caused the break in my little test piece. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so once that's set in there, all I need to do is set my pencil at roughly the depth of uh, oh down here 
roughly the depth of the maximum throat of the scribe here. Keep it parallel to one side and draw. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. This is a rough get started. You can see it's kind of rough. There we go. That side came down a little, little tidier. Okay, well I'll cut it to roughly that and then we'll see if we need a little trimming. Okay then. All right. Well, no one needed to see me make that cut on the table saw, but actually that's pretty darn good. Let's look at the steaming. It was great. We're steaming away here. Steam point out both sides. I'm loving it. That is, oh, that is hot. That's fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to check the water level. I don't know if you can hear me with the hail on the roof. This is either going to go really well or really badly. Listen for the <coughs> sound. So I'm going to leave the blanket on it as long as possible. I'll swing it around, get it into place, and then just slip that off and see if, see if, see what we can do. Oh my gosh, let's go. Plug the kettle, release this clamp. Oh, that steam is hot. Whoa. Turn this around in here as quickly as I possibly can, right on top of you there. Out that window in this window. Again, this is a long piece of wood in a small space. Okay, so off with the blanket. And let's see if I can push this into place. Get it close before I put the clamp on it. So far, not too bad. Okay. You know the sound we're all dreading, right? so good whoops I gotta move quick because this wood is cooling here. I would say ladies and gentlemen we are not doing too badly sorry about the plane but there's nothing we can do about that this time drive that in a bit wow I think may have done it. May have done it. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to fuss with it. I would be very happy if this is where it was. Here, I'll take you off of here and have a look. So I put a little spacer in at this end, so that'll end up right. That is right on the seam, all the way along here. It comes around. It's just on top. Now this is where there's a bit of a gap because this isn't a very good radius, but this is a nice, neat radius. Fine all the way along here, all the way along here. And here, only because this notch isn't really cut out right, I have to just tidy that up. But that'll be all just fine. Because once this is holding itself together, I can actually take the clamp off and always return it to roughly that position. Ooh, a little bit of spring back won't matter at all. I would say, I would say that went really, really well. Well, hello there folks and welcome to this week's Beer of the Week. Uh, this week we are featuring Steamworks Flagship IPA. This is a classic British Columbia, uh, Vancouver um, beer from an, a well-established uh, microbrewery, which is also a pub in, uh, in downtown Vancouver. This is a really an old school West Coast IPA. This is sort of one of the ones that started it all. Now, for those of you that noticed the name, Steamworks, Steaming wood this week, pretty clever, eh? That wasn't me, that was the owner of MV Zephyrus that proposed this beer. Okay, so this really is an awesome beer. Um, very hoppy, um, relatively strong, a lot of floras, a lot of citrus, and some people have said maybe too much, kind of blocking some of that great hoppy flavor. To me, I like, you know, citrus in a beer, so I'm not too worried about it. What this is, is a very turbid beer. Uh, that's a fancy word for cloudy. So you pour about two thirds of it, then you give the remainder a really strong swill. You can see what we have so far is not all that cloudy. What's left in here is going to make it very, very cloudy. And what it'll also add is an opportunity to give it what they call about a two finger head, which I think is just about perfect. 
Now, if you're not comfortable with a cloudy beer, make sure you pour that like that. Otherwise, you're going to get a whole lot of kind of sludgy stuff in the bottom. But let's not worry about that. Let's drink this fantastic beverage. Mm. I do love it. I really, really do love it. It's one of my favorite IPAs from this coast. Again, very, very floral. So let's take advantage of this uh, to thank our patrons. No new patrons this week, which gives me the opportunity to thank all our past patrons yet again. Thank you so much for your help. I really, really appreciate it. Cheers. Oh, fantastic. And for those of you who are still around, okay, a little more housekeeping. The big drama of the advertising last week. I think a lot of people might have misunderstood what I was doing by monetizing some of the videos. It wasn't to earn any money because you can't earn any money at the size of a uh, channel that I am. What I wanted to do was determine whether or not the myth that if you don't monetize, YouTube holds back your um, view count, or in other words, limits how much you're promoted. That's the coho on its way to um, Port Angeles, Washington State. I love that boat. Anyway, so it was really just a test. And I've run the test for two weeks, and I've conclusively determined that monetizing does not improve your standing in the search engine, uh, which I suppose is a disappointment because my views are dropping steadily, but that's just the nature of the beast. As a result, I'm not going to monetize anymore. All the videos have been unmonetized. Certainly for now, there is no advantage for the pennies it makes. I did make a few dollars off it, and to compensate in some small way for those of you who've had to deal with that nasty advertising for a little while, I'm going to give away a t-shirt to someone who says the word, oh, I don't know, Steamworks. So simple, Steamworks. Leave me a comment with the word Steamworks in it, and I'll look over the first 24 hours with the comments and send out a t-shirt to you. Cheers! <laughs>